Solver is a what-if analysis that is very similar to GoalSeek. With GoalSeek, you can change one cell to reach a particular goal. With Solver, you can take it to the next level. You can change more than one cell to reach your goal. And you can also add in what are called constraints or real-world limitations that make your result more realistic. Solver is an add-in, so you do need to make sure that you have it loaded. Uh, once you have it loaded, it is found on the Data tab all the way on the right-hand side. Let's go ahead and open up Solver and look at our parameters. First, we have an objective. That is our goal. We can set that to be maximized, minimized, or to be a specific value. You can pick one cell as your objective. The by changing variable cells is how we're going to reach our goal. What cells in the spreadsheet can we change in order to reach our objective? Subject to the constraints allows us to put in those real world limitations so that we make sure we get a realistic answer. This spreadsheet is looking at a boat manufacturing company. They are trying to determine how to make the most profit based on the type of boats that they can create. In red down here, it's giving us our parameters that we need. And they're going to go essentially in the same order that we have in the parameters dialog box. Letter A says that we want to maximize the total profit by changing the quantity to make of each boat model. So our objective is to maximize the total profit. So our objective will be the total profit total cell. This cell happens to contain a sum function that adds up the individual profits from each boat model. So our objective is G19. We do want to maximize that value to get the most profit. Under by changing variable cells, we need to think about what cells we can change in order to reach that goal of maximizing our profit. So in this case, it says we can change the quantity to make of each boat model. So I'm going to look in my spreadsheet for the keywords that relate to how many boats I'm going to make of each type. And I find that in column F. So my changing cells are going to be F15, 16, 17, and 18. So I'm going to include all four of those there. Letter B asks us to include certain constraints. So we have four constraints listed out here. So we're going to take them just one at a time. The first says that we cannot make more boats than we have available assemblies. So if I click Add, and I look in my spreadsheet, I need to find out how many available assemblies I have. And I do find that in column E. My constraints are uh, similar to the format of a logical test where you're comparing two things and you have a greater than, less than, or equal sign in the middle. But I'm going to start off with the quantity to make and I'm going to say that I want the quantity to make F15 through F18 to be less than or equal to the number of boat types that I have. So my constraint is going to look at the quantity to make being less than or equal to the available assemblies. I'm going to click Add, and that will load that one in, and I can do my second constraint. My second constraint says that I have to satisfy the customer orders for each boat type. So again, I'm going to use the quantity to make as my cell reference. And I need to think about whether I want this value to be less than the customer orders or greater than the customer orders. So I'm going to start just by putting the customer orders in and then I'll read this aloud to myself to make sure that I get it the right way. Okay, so I want my quantity to make to be bigger than the customer orders. So for the all-purpose boats, I have seven customers that would like that boat. I need to make at least seven of those. So I'm going to use greater than or equal to. So that we're saying that the number of boats that I'm making in the cell reference is going to be bigger than the number of orders that I already have in. 
My third constraint is that the total number of boats cannot exceed the total number of available boat frames or boat bottoms. Uh, D4 tells us how many boat frames I have available. There's 135 and I need to make sure I don't make more than 135 boats. So I'm going to use the total quantity to make out of F19 and I'm going to make this value be less than or equal to the 135 frames out of D4. I'm not going to use the individual quantity to make values here because if I do that then it's going to split it out and say okay all-purpose boats don't make more than 135 don't make more than 135 sky blue boats and so on and we could end up with a total that's bigger than 135 so we want to make sure those overall totals don't exceed 135 The last parameter is to make only whole boats. So again, we're talking about the quantity to make. This is not a greater than less than situation. We want to make sure that we have whole boats, that we have whole numbers come back in the quantity to make cells. So I'm going to use this constraint called INT, which stands for integer. An integer is another word for a whole number. Now that I've put all of my constraints in, I'm going to click OK, and I can review all of the parameters that I've put in. Once I'm finished with that, I'll click Solve. It tells me that it found a solution. I have an option here to either keep the solution or to restore the original values. I'm going to keep this solution, and I'm also going to create an answer report. The answer report will recap all of the parameters that we put in so anybody can review those at any time. When I click OK, it saves my results here and it also adds a new worksheet called Answer Report 1 which details out all of my parameters.